are you getting tired of what's going on with silver? Are you frustrated? Hi everyone, thanks for watching Yankee Stacking. What we're seeing now with regards to investor sentiment is a complete depression. You know, is that the case for you? Well, as a prepper stacker, I see this as an incredible buying opportunity. As a contrarian investor, I also see this as a buying opportunity, especially in the mining sector, where the leverage upside is massive. I am a legit contrarian investor, not a poser who, you know, capitulates either in my physical precious metals like this or in my silver and gold investments. And when I see silver being one of the only commodities in the world that is down in 2021, I think buy. So definitely, if you're a stacker, you need to be buying this stuff. You know the fundamentals haven't changed. This is a long game for silver, folks. I don't trade much in the junior mining space, but when I do, I like to make sure that they agree with my Yankee Quadrant analysis. This is my way of determining what mining companies should be watched and potentially purchased. Apollo Silver is looking like it could tick all the boxes for me. I've researched them quite a bit. And now I have the opportunity to interview their CEO and chairman, Andy Bowring. Apollo purchased its huge silver asset for just 30 cents an ounce. So let's hear what Andy has to say about silver sentiment and Apollo Silver. Welcome, Andy. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel. Thanks for having me, Yankee. Hey, this is a precious metals stacking YouTube channel. We love this stuff right here, the silver. You, do you know what it means to be a silver stacker? I just, I guess, have an, I, well, I'm a silver stacker. I got a whole bunch of silver coins and bars at home and some gold ones to fill in, but yeah, I got married uh, in 2005. We had 135 people at our wedding uh, and we gave a one ounce, we had a one ounce, a one ounce pure silver coin minted uh, with our, my wife and my name on and the date and a, and a statement. And, and that was what we gave everybody at the wedding was a one ounce silver coin. So nice remembrance from your wedding. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, just that, you know, when you're in mining business, that's what you do, right? So <laughs> That's awesome. But you you understand why we love this stuff, the physical 100%. stuff. 100%. Yep. 100%. So before we discuss your company, Apollo Silver, let me ask you about what is going on with silver's price? So look, there's been nine years of pain in this, in the precious metal trade. Uh, after a tremendous run from early 2000 to 2011, and then then nine years of misery for, for, for all miners and all explorers and, and, uh, and metal holders. And then we came out of that and I can't remember if it was early 2019 or mid 2019, but it, it was only two years ago that, 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 that downtrend was broken mm -hmm. and that consolidation period. And we had a big run fast. I mean, I think, uh, gold was around 1260 or something in mid, mid 2019. I, Silver, I can't even remember, it was eight dollars at the time, somewhere oh, yeah. around there. Okay, but so then we had a pretty big run, and look where I mean, look where you saw silver and gold run to. Uh, and now you've had a 12 months or so of, of consolidation. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you just don't get um, these explosive um, moves in, in markets without consolidation, and, and then before your next leg up. and and so I think that next leg up still coming. I think it's early in the game. I think that this last two years of, of price movements, once once we consolidate out of it, it had all these the precious metals had higher. I think all the metals had higher. It's caused uh, with the stackers a lot of discouragement, a lot of people feeling like, oh my word, is the the bull run over? Let's take Google for instance. I mean, you could have got Google at a hundred dollars a share when it first went public, and then. And then, uh, and you could have traded it in and out and you could have bought it one time at $400 only to watch it fall to 300 12 months later. And, and, and look at it today, it's $3,000. And, and, and all markets move like that. They go up, they, they pull back, they consolidate. And, and the future is really bright for silver. It's got a big industrial demand that really drives, separates it say from the gold and, and as a, I think as a consequence of that, that uh, 
not not just its precious metal holding for for insurance purposes and we should talk a little bit about that but the industrial demand and the changing the changing of the whole paradigm shift from fossil fuel based economy to to greening of the planet and renewables and sto- and electrical storage all that stuff matters solar energy matters and and that's all going to drive the future for the silver space the long term trend looks really really good for the demand of silver and and not so good for the supply i think silver's got a bright future i really do i said it a minute ago i'll say it again i use what i call the yankee quadrant uh, andy to help me figure out the right way to evaluate a mining stock and to see if it's something I want to watch or maybe get into. And it's really four things. So it's management, projects, ownership, and financials. I'm going to touch on each of those, uh, starting with management. Well, I've uh, been in the business for 30 some odd years and I I agree with your four pieces of that quadrant. I look at all those myself (laughs) when I think of what I want to build and do next. And um, uh, but I'm all about timing and when is the right time to do something and then building the right team around it, getting the right asset, the right shareholders, the right capital structure, and then going. I'll say this, that my group, and I've been involved in nine deals since the beginning of time, and five of them have been bought out for their assets or taken over for their assets. And the rest of them still trade today. And Prime Mining, it's a Venture 50 company. It, it has a half a billion dollar market cap. Uh, American Lithium is another one that still trades today. It has a half a billion dollar market cap and 45,000 U.S. shareholders. Yep. Uh, Millennial Lithium is in a takeover battle right now between Gangfeng Lithium and another major Chinese lithium producer. And I was a founder and early shareholder in that. When the guy said, hey, would you look at doing a silver company? And so, mm-hmm. hey, can I, can I, can we build a silver company? And can we, can we, can we put a business plan together that we can advance? And, and everybody at the end of the day has a chance to make some money in it. Yeah, probably. The space is there. The timing's right. So let's go. And so. Andy, isn't like when it comes to a junior miner, isn't the, the, the absolute best, the most lucrative exit strategy is to sell it right to a bigger company you know at a premium absolutely and you've done that over and over again right yes you want to advance a project to a certain point to get a major and majors come to us juniors to buy their assets because we have better exploration teams that's what we focus on they focus on mining so they they will come to us if the asset is desirable to them at a certain point in time and and the trick is to get that right that right chemistry when the time's right, right? So tell us about your team. One of my partners here, uh, my CEO at American Lithium, introduced me to Tom Paragudoff. And Tom is a geologist that spent 18 years with, with BHP and then seven years in the Robert Friedland organization. And and guys that come out of that Friedland organization are powerful. They know what to do. They're, they're, they're top-notch, um, top-notch people. Uh, I said to him, if I find the right asset, do you want to join me and, and come to work? And Because you got to build the right team. And he said, for sure. And, and so we looked at an asset in Peru that was interesting and kicked some tires down there. And, it, you know, there's a lot of silver that comes out of Peru. And, but, uh, but there was complications with it. And then we looked at something that, that really liked in Mexico that was a previous operating mine and still operates. And, and, uh, and I knew the people that put it into production and, and so I could have brought a team back to, to rebuild it. And, but, but there were some complications again with, with silver streams off of it and with some community groups. And anyway, when, uh, when a private group called Stronghold came to me with these California and Arizona assets, I showed them to Tom and we both agreed, hey, you know what? We can, we can advance these. We can get a team that will be excited with these things that will come, we'll advance them and then and then we'll figure out later where the optionality exists. Is this something that we try and take through to production ourselves? Or do we, do we look for a bigger company to buy it from us down the road? And, and we both had the same feelings. And, and, uh, and so that's where it started. And then, and then Tom's been building a big team around that. And so management we've got. We've got some of the best and brightest in, in, our, in our company. Hey, you talk about the projects and you mentioned sort of indirectly jurisdictions there. Tell us about the Calico District. There are two deposits that are side by side. They're well known. They were drilled off in the 80s. Uh, 
uh, Waterloo by Asarco, and then subsequently bought by Pan American Silver, and Langtree was superiorial, and then ultimately um, taken over by Athena. The San Bernardino County is is the probably the most mining friendly county in 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 California, and and that makes it a little bit easier. It's a tier one jurisdiction. As, as much as people have always liked Peru, and that it's had a stable mining code for forever. Uh, there's been six presidents there in the last year. Mm. And so it's got some complications right now. And and that makes it difficult to operate in. And so we decided to stay away from there. And then I I do operate in Mexico with Prime Mining. Our group our group's busy in Sinaloa State in Mexico. And so I don't have bad things to say about Mexico. But but you've got to look for the right assets and, and we just weren't able to find the right assets for the right price. When so when Speaking California is the place you ought to be, so <laughs> here we are, right? Speaking of, and, of price, I got to ask you this. Did you really purchase these silver assets for just 30 cents an ounce? Yeah, the number is somewhere between 30 and 40 cents an ounce. And, and it'll depend ultimately what, what we end up confirming is there as a current 43101 resource. But, you know, Pan American is not a small company. They're a... They're a successful silver producer. They've been banking silver assets for, for as long as I've been in the business. When they say and their technical teams say there's 100 plus million ounces there, you can you can believe that there's 100 plus million ounces there. So wow. we paid 31, 31 million US for those assets. So yeah, there you go. I think at the end of the day that that number is going to be even less as we prove that there's more there than what Pan American says is there. I want to talk to you about your your um, capital structure and insider ownership. So why don't you talk about the ownership first? Well, so there's, I think there's about 160 million shares out in the company. Uh, there's another 60 million in derivatives. Half of those are at $1.25 a share, their warrants, and then, then the rest are around maybe a 62 cent average. Mm-hmm. Uh, 20, this company's pretty well split in force. You got about 25% of the companies owned by management, insiders, uh, employees, officers, and directors, 25% by strategic and friendly shareholders, 25% by institutional holders, and maybe 25% by retail. This summer, we did a $53 million financing on the launch of this, and you had some of the bigger funds like Jupiter and Sprott and Terra and, and Commodity all take big, big uh, positions in the stock. So if you go look at our information on the on, on our website, you'll see who the holders are. We usually disclose the, the significant shareholders in our institutional holdings. So, but yeah, some, some big, well, so I mentioned Jupiter. Jupiter... Yeah. Jupiter is has got several. I think they're just their precious metal component is two billion dollars in their fund. They're they're out of the UK and massive fund. There's some really good uh, supporters, some solid people that have given us a chance here to, to to deliver and show them what we can do. How does your market valuation compare to some of your peers? We're claiming that those resources that sit at Langtree and and at Langtree there was, I think the last. 43101 report that was done was around 40 or 50 million ounces of silver. Pan American's work says that there's a 100, 100 or 102 million ounces at Waterloo. Those to us are historic resources. They're not 43101 compliant because we need to get an independent in there to do the valuation. But that being said, the chain of custody of all the data has been so good that 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 there's a good chance that we might be, maybe don't have to go do a whole bunch of redrilling of these things, that we're going to be able to use all the existing chip chip yeah. trays, uh, core that sits in, in storage and uh, um, rejects and pulps used for the assaying and all the original assay sheets that still exist today. So there's a really good chance that we're going to be able to do that upgrading that, that we were talking about earlier and, and move these from historic to 43101 compliancy. And then when we do that, then we can talk about them being our silver and mm-hmm. that there's that we know there's this much there. Right. When that happens, we're gonna get a we or we should get a a valuation increase. And typically, and so I I gotta be a bit careful here because I don't want to get myself in trouble for saying things that are too forward looking and but but uh 
you know, right now we're valued at, at significantly less than say what our peers are valued at mm -hmm. when those resources are, are, um, 43 compliant. And so we would think that maybe we get a price movement to, to, that equates to our peers. And, but let me just say this, there's a huge vacuum between 200 million market cap and a billion dollar market cap. And, and there's an awful lot of opportunity to grow a company in there. And, and this is one of those opportunities. The, much of the historic drilling that was done at Langtree and at Waterloo hung in mineralization. That means that holes stopped in mineralization. There's opportunities to expand the mineralization along strike, at depth, and in other areas on the property. And keep in mind that it was two separate properties owned by two different entities all along. When you put them together, sometimes one and one is five, and you get the opportunity to fill in what's missing in between. You get the opportunity to look at one big operation, and there's, and there's value to that. And so I think that the upside is not only going to come from us getting the resources compliant to 43101 and making a statement about that, but I think that, we're, that we can have some good success with exploration. One of the things that drew me to you is I love the fact that it is one of those rare silver pure plays in America. How can people, you know, get more information or contact you if they're interested in potentially I, investing? The best way is to go to our website. It's apollosilver.com and our contact information is there where there's phone numbers and emails and, and like we're happy to speak to anybody at any time about the company. We think you should look up, do your homework, look at our track record, see what we do. And um, and if you think it's a fit for you, then then please reach out to us by phone or email and 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 find out what we're doing. Yep. Well, I have the ticker symbol right on the screen now. Apollo Silver in the U.S. is APGOF. In Canada, it's APGO. I will put all of the information in the description of this video below. And uh, thank you so much again, Andy. This was really fun. Yankee, thank you very much. All right, guys, do your own due diligence. Check them out. Put them on your watch list. And as always, I hope your day is A-OK. -okay.